welcome to another little book review. Today I'll be reviewing the second book in the Queens of Conquest series by Joanna Courtney, this being The Constant Queen. And this is a historical romance of Harald Hadrada from Norway and Elzaveta from Kiev. And I will read you the blurb right now. Elzaveta is a princess of Kiev, but that doesn't stop her chasing adventure. Defying conventions, she rides the rapids of the Dnieper alongside her royal brothers and longs to rule in her own right as a queen. Elzaveta meets her match when the fearsome Viking warrior Harald Hardrada arrives at her father's court seeking fame and fortune. He entrusts Elzaveta to be his treasure keeper, holding the keys to his ever-growing wealth and eventually to his heart. Theirs is a fierce romance and the strength of their love binds them together as they travel across the vast seas to Denmark, Sweden, Norway and Iceland. In 1066 their ambition carries them to Orkney as they plan to invade England and claim the crown. The Constant Queen is a powerful absorbing novel which tells the story of a daring Viking warrior, his forgotten queen and a love that almost changed the course of history. That sounds interesting, right? I mean, te- the whole dynamic between the year 1066 and the players in the game between um, Harold Godwinson, Harold Hadrada and William of Normandy all vying for the English crown. Now the first one in this series, The Chosen Queen, you'll find that link up there or up there, I, wherever it is, it's up there somewhere, it tells the story of Harold Godwinson and Edith and on this one we get the other perspective of Harald Hadrada and Elzaveta, mainly from Elzaveta's point of view. Now having enjoyed The Chosen Queen, I think I gave it about three stars, um, I thought I would enjoy this second one as well. It details lives of people that I have hardly any knowledge of. Um, I wasn't even aware that Harald Hadrada was married, let alone married twice. Um, So the whole Elzaveta point of view, I had absolutely no idea. All the politics in Kiev, absolutely no idea about. And all the politics in Norway, again, absolutely no idea about. I only know the character of Harald Hardrada from history when he invaded England vying for the English crown in 1066 and was killed at the Battle of Stamford Bridge near York by by then King Harold Godwinson early in 1066, who then had to march south because William had landed at Hastings. And we all know how that went. So I thought that this would be an interesting insight into the politics of the time in Russia and in Normandy and everything around that. I thought that that would be a really, really interesting take. Boy, was I wrong. I enjoyed reading it, but in the way that I enjoy watching reality TV, because this reads like an afternoon telenovela. All the politics, all the scheming, everything going on at the time, even the battles are skimmed over in favour of fluffy romance. Not to mention that Harold was married twice, again another book where the main char- the main historical character is married twice. He has a Roman wife in Elzaveta and a handfast wife in Torah. Was everybody doing this at that time? Because every other historical book I've read they get one wife and it's very, very looked down upon if they engage with another woman. Comment down below if you know that this was a historical thing that happened all over the place or whether it was just these two. I really, really want to know. And even getting over the fact of the two wives and the one guy, I didn't like the way that it was... I didn't like the way that that whole dynamic was portrayed. So... In the first one, in The Chosen Queen, it is portrayed quite portrayed quite with an adult outlook on it. So they know the stakes, they know what's going on, everybody's aware of each other, they're aware of their dynamic in the relationship, in the marriages, and they're friends, and they all kind of get along. In this, it's not the same. Elzaveta is supposed to be, she is our main character, she is supposed to be our main point of view but she falls far short of the bar in what historical context is trying to be portrayed and what annoys me most about historical fiction or historical romance using 
actual historical figures is that more often than not, the actual historical figures are a hell of a lot more interesting than when they're portrayed in one of these types of books. Because the real Elisif of Kiev is so interesting and worldly and she had a front row seat to most of the political manoeuvrings in Europe in the years leading up to the year 1066. She had a front row seat to all of it. And all we get in this book is a princess who simps over Prince Harold, go, travels with him to Norway and then bitches for chapters and chapters about how Norway is not as advanced as Kiev. And then we get onto the third character, which is Tora, which is Harold Hadrada's hand-fasted wife back in Norway. And he's hand-fasted to her before he marries Elzaveta and doesn't even mention it. Now, as I mentioned, the first book um, explores the dynamic between a Roman wife and a hand-fasted wife without detriment to any of the characters involved, whereas this second book goes full telenovela. Throw the key, t Jesus take the wheel, because this is a full telenovela book. The two ladies, the Elzaveta and Tora, are set against each other right at the beginning by just hearing of the other's name. It, she only has to be insinuated to be in the conversation before whoever is there at the time is bitching and is having a strop and is having a tantrum and is stalking off and slamming doors. It's like, it wouldn't happen. And to have these strong female historical figures reduced to nothing more than bitchy, snide love rivals is a crime that is well up there. I don't like it. I don't like it in not just historical fiction, I don't like it in any book. I like a love triangle, but don't force hatred of characters that have absolutely no knowledge of each other. Or how, at least if you're going to hate somebody, meet them first or have that person do something to earn your hatred, not just be made to marry the guy that you're handfasted to or be made to handfast to a guy that you want. I, d I just didn't like it. If you're looking for historical accuracy, then this is not a book that you want to pick up. This got two stars from me. I, I liked reading it because I like reality trash TV. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. But if I wanted the actual historical context, this probably isn't one that I was going to pick up. But I will be reading the third and final in the trilogy, that being The Constant Queen, because that's somewhere on my shelf. Like, I think it's down there. I think it's down, it's down there somewhere. So I will be reading that in the next couple of weeks. But until then, like this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel because it really boosts it in the algorithm. And as always, keep reading.